Our final topic for this semester will be a mashup of things you already know. We're going to take slope, Pythagorean theorem, quadrilateral properties, and mash them all together. What we're going to get out of them is called quads on a grid, where we put a quadrilateral on a grid, and you're going to have to prove what it is based on slope and Pythagorean theorem. You remember slope, it's that rise of a run kind of thing where you got to walk from one dot to the next dot and it's the the numerator is the up down movement and there's denominator is the right left movement just make sure you get your signs correct if we have two things parallel that means the slopes are the same now notice here where one slope is six over eight and the other one's 3 over 4. Well, the 6 over 8 reduces to 3 over 4. So you might have to reduce some things. A new concept for you is going to be perpendicular. How do we know two lines are perpendicular? Well, it has something to do with their slopes. Look on the right where the red line is 3 over 4 slope. And the other line is a negative 4 over 3. That means they're perpendicular. It's a negative reciprocal or an opposite inverse. Somebody sometimes called it a negative flippy thing. You're going to have to be able to use Pythagorean theorem. That's at a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Again, um, it's going to let us find one side. How Pythagorean theorem shows up is if we have the side of a shape, we can draw lines up, down, and right, left in order to make a right triangle and therefore we can find the hypotenuse which is one of the sides of our shape and you have to remember the properties of the quadrilaterals the important properties the ones that we really want to pay attention to for this is are things parallel are things perpendicular that'd be the 90 degree thing and do things have equal sides because parallel perpendicular is a slope and equal sides congruent sides is Pythagorean Theorem. Time for some examples. The first thing I tend to attack is the slope and I'll dash in uh, how I walk from one dot to the next. For example, walking from A to B I would have to go up four into the right nine so that gives me a four ninth slope. Um, if I want to walk from B to C I gotta walk to the right four and down four so that gives me a negative four over four slope. If I want to walk from C to D, again, I'm walking down 4 and down 9. Oh, the down down is a double negative, which just makes it positive. And then finally, um, A to D, D to A. It doesn't actually matter which way you go, A to D or D to A. The signs are going to work out. because It doesn't matter if, if you have one negative sign, it makes the whole fraction negative. So that could be negative 4 over 4, or it could be 4 over negative 4. It's still going to come out the same. So, since we have uh, two sets of slopes that are the same, um, we've got two sets of parallel sides. Now, that two sets of parallel sides sets us into a parallelogram family. And that mean could be rhombus, could be rectangle, could be um, square. But the slopes weren't negative reciprocal, so it's not rectangle or uh, square. But is it a parallelogram or a rhombus. So we have to do Pythagorean Theorem. You see, well, the top sets of numbers, the, uh, the AB and the DC, um, their right triangles are 4 and 9, so 4 squared plus 9 squared. They both come up to being x squared 97, and that's all you need to know. You need to know if they have the same number. You don't need to know the square root of 97. You don't need to know this is 9.8 something, something, something. Just know we're coming up with the same number. And then we do the other two sides and come up with, hey, those are going to be the same size also. So now you put a final statement. And this is your proof statement. This is saying, hey, this is a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel. And you give the slopes that you found. And that opposite sides are congruent. And you give the numbers that are your proof. One more example. So again, first I go after the slopes because that breaks it up into it's either a kite, no parallels, a trapezoid, one set of parallels, or the parallelogram family, two sets of parallels. 
So if we look at some things here, let's start with AB. It's a uh, up three, right three, so that's a three over three. Again, the B to C, we're down five and right seven, negative five over seven. Um, C to D or D to C, we're going to go up two, right eight. So that's a two over eight. And then A to D is down four, right two, negative four over two. None of the slopes are the same. So if they're not the same, one choice, we could have a kite. So now you need to do Pythagorean theorem to see if any of the sides are the same. Because remember, the properties of a kite are that we have two sets of adjacent congruent. So I'm doing the left side first, and we've got a 3 and 3 and a 4 and 2, and I do Pythagorean theorem, and come up that they are not the same because we're going to have a x squared is 18 and an x squared is 20. That's not the same. Just to be complete, I'm going to do the right side of these uh, this shape. Again, 7 and 5, a 2 and an 8, we come up with a 74 and a 68. So again, those two sides are not the same. So, we put our final statement, and our final statement says, what is the shape, and what numbers are our evidence? So, this is just a quadrilateral, it's nothing special, because no slopes are the same, write down the slopes, and no sides are the same, write down the sides. That's quads on a grid. Uh, mashing things up, mashing up Pythagorean theorem, slopes, properties of quadrilaterals, and coming up with proofs. Proving something is something, or not something.